Okay, here's another problem. A rock containing uranium-238 and lead-206 uh, was examined to determine its approximate age. Analysis showed the ratio of lead-206 to uranium-238 to be 0.115. Assuming all lead was formed through the decay, calculate the age of the rock. So this is assuming that in our rock we have uranium-238 only at the very beginning and there's no lead so any lead that has formed any lead 206 will have come from the uranium decaying into the lead using uranium 238 instead of uh, carbon 14 can allow us to determine the age of rocks that could be millions of years old rather than just tens of thousands of year, years old. Why? Because the half-life for uranium is much, much greater than the half-life for carbon-14. So hopefully you're beginning to see a pattern and you know how you can at least initially attack this problem. Uh, we need to solve for the age of the rock, so we need to solve for time. So we're going to need the integrated rate law. To use the integrated rate law, we need the decay constant and we can get the decay constant from half-life. This additional information is going to help us later on in the calculation. So the first thing I'll do is I'll solve for the decay constant using the half-life equation and I get 1.54 times 10 to the negative 10, 1 over years. Then I can use the integrated rate law in order to solve for time. Now the integrated rate law then is going to be because it is uranium that is decaying uranium-238 that is decaying, then it'll be the natural log of the ratio of the number of radioactive nuclides of uranium at time t over the number of radioactive nuclides of uranium initially at time zero is equal to negative kt. Now I don't know these values, but I do know the ratio of, of lead-206 to uranium-238 at time t. And I also know that I'm going to assume all of the lead was formed through the decay. So if all of the lead was formed through the decay, then the number of initial uh, uranium-238 uh, radioactive nuclides should be equal to the number of uranium-238 nuclides that are still in, in the rock plus the number of uh, lead 206 nuclides that were formed. So if I had a hundred of these, then and let's say uh, 70 of them turned into lead, then I would have 30 left and 70 would be lead, so 70 and 30 would give me my original 100. So this becomes important. This allows me to modify this equation so that the number of radioactive nuclides initially of uranium is going to be equal to the number that I have now of uranium plus the lead that was formed. There's one other important piece of information that's given and that is this ratio right here of lead 206 to uranium 238. So I know at time t the number of lead um, nuclides uh, divided by the number of uranium nuclides is 0.115. So I could rearrange this equation and solve for the number of lead nuclides at time t. It's simply 0.115 times the number of uranium nuclides at time t. I can then take this value, I'm sorry, this expression for lead at time t and plug it in here. What does that do for me? Well, I will then have this whole ratio expressed in units of um, number of uranium nuclides at time t. Let me do that and I'll show you. So now I have number of uranium nuclides at time t divided by number of uranium nuclides at time t plus 0.115 times number of uranium nuclides at time t. All of these, based on the algebra, can cancel out.
the equation then simply becomes a natural log of 1 over 1 plus 0.115 or natural log of 1 over 1.115. This is uh, a little bit of algebra that may take some thinking but definitely allows us to solve for the time. Uh, now I only have one variable in my integrated rate law equation and that is time and I will get 7.07 .07 times 10 to the 8 years.